Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. It is a beautiful spring day here in Chicago. Awesome day to open up the windows, do a little bit of spring cleaning. So in my case, that's gonna involve cleaning the corrector plate on my Celestron Rasa 8 telescope. It's definitely been a while, it's due for a cleaning. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the products and the method that I use to make sure those optics are nice and clean. One note about cleaning optical surfaces like this, you probably don't need to do it as often as you think. Uh, once a year might even be too much. That would be the absolute most that I would recommend. A lot of people go years and years without cleaning their optical surfaces, and they do just fine. A visible amount of dust on these surfaces actually probably doesn't degrade your image as much as you think. Where you can run into issues is if you have a large amount of pollen or mold. If that sort of thing is pretty common in the air in your area, it could actually permanently damage the protective coatings that are on your optics. So that's one of the things I'm gonna be trying to avoid with my cleaning today. So when you're cleaning these surfaces, I would recommend being pretty gentle. Now, you don't need to be nervous about this. Modern optical coatings are very strong, they're very resilient. Uh, unless there is some sort of issue in the manufacturing process, you're not gonna be damaging these unless you really start to get uh, too hard on the optics. So no need to be nervous, but do have a gentle touch. Better safe than sorry when cleaning these surfaces. So as with everything astrophotography, there are plenty of different opinions on the best products and methods to do for this sort of cleaning. Uh, I'm gonna show you what works for me, what I've done in the past. However, if you have a, a different product or method that you use that you find works really well, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it and maybe give it a try. And while you're there, also don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks. Oh, one other thing. The method I'm gonna show you is specifically for corrector plates and the objective lens on refractor telescopes. This is not going to apply to mirrors on reflector telescopes or for filters you might be using for imaging. Those are different surfaces and a different method uh, pretty much entirely. So uh, just be aware of that. I'm gonna try and make videos about uh, both of those in the future, but uh, for now, let's head on inside and get cleaning. All right, so a quick look at some of the supplies that I'm gonna be using for this process. I've got 100% pure cotton cotton balls. These are gonna be very soft and able to hold on to some of the solution in order to apply it to the surface that we're cleaning. You don't wanna be spraying or dripping any of the solution directly onto the optics. I've also got distilled water. This has a lot of uses around the household for cleaning, but uh, it's also pretty good for cleaning optical surfaces. I've also got some isopropyl rubbing alcohol, and this is 70%. Generally between 70 and 90% is the recommendation. That's so it isn't either evaporating too fast or too slowly in order to uh, properly clean the surface. And I've also got my handy blower bulb. So that's what we're gonna be using instead of compressed air to actually clean the surface. I've also got some Kim wipes and these are great. They're absolutely lint free and good for potentially cleaning up any of the residue that might be left behind by the cotton balls. Although I've had a pretty good results with those in the past. And I've also got some gloves to put on. I'm a little bit nervous about getting any of the oils from my skin on the optical surfaces. That's another thing that can begin to break down some of the protective coatings. So I generally always gonna have those gloves on when I'm working with the optics. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is use your bulb cleaner in order to clean off any of the larger pieces of dust that are stuck to the corrector plate. If you use compressed air for this, you're gonna to wanna to follow the directions very carefully on tilting and not shaking the can and things like that. I just generally find it easier to use just this squeeze bulb to get these larger particles off. 
You want to start off by dipping the cotton ball into the rubbing alcohol. You don't want it sopping wet. You can squeeze it off a little bit just to make sure it's definitely damp, but not going to let drips go out onto the corrector plate. And then you want to, starting at the center, do smooth radial strokes from the center to the outer part. You can also do strokes that are around the circumference of the circle, as long as they are long and smooth. Now, one of the things I'm doing here is every time I'm making a new stroke, I'm turning the cotton ball to a section that I have not used before. What you don't want to be doing is dragging some of the dirt and the grind that you've picked up with the cotton ball. You don't want to be dragging that across the surface anymore. So you want to be picking it up, turning the cotton ball slightly in order to have a clean surface that you're using. And after a few of these, depending on how dirty your corrector plate is, you can get a new cotton ball. Now at this point, there generally is a little bit of residue left over from the cotton ball, some of the alcohol that didn't uh, quite get off of there in a timely manner. And so for that, I'm gonna be using the Kim wipes. They're gonna be dipped in that distilled water. I'm gonna be attempting to uh, get rid of that uh, slight amount of residue. So in this case, I'm gonna be doing the circumference strokes. You want these to be nice and smooth and in one direction. It's generally around the outside that we have some left over. I'm going to turn to a clean area of the Kim wipe now and continue trying to pick up that residue. I've also heard that PEC pads are pretty good for this. They absorb a little bit more of the water or whatever solution you might be using, and that can be pretty effective. But I found this method is, uh, is effective as well. Now, it's very important as you're applying these touches, you're not really pushing against the surface, all you're doing is allowing the slight weight of the cleaning material, the cotton ball or the Kim wipe, or the pec pad, that's what's applying the pressure. It's hardly anything, basically a feather touch in order to lift off the um, bits that you're able to get off without too much interference. And for any places where you might have left a little bit of liquid, you can use a dry Kim wipe to pick up that extra moisture. So overall, not a huge amount of waste from it, but uh, definitely don't be afraid to uh, be using as many of these as you need. You always want to be using a clean surface as you're contacting the optical surface and trying to lift off that dust, then rotate and put down a clean part of the cleaning pad. So overall, the surface looking a lot cleaner now. Very happy with how this turned out. And hopefully after a uh, fairly pollen-filled spring, we'll be not having to deal with too much of that left on the optics. So that's all there is to it. A fairly simple process, one that you don't have to do all that often, but definitely can be good for uh, maintaining the long life of your optics. Now, if you found this video useful, definitely do give it a like. That's going to help others find it and find it useful as well. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet to Windy City Astrophotography, uh, definitely do that. Otherwise, clear skies, and we'll see you soon.